Well, I've known him a long time. Steve Kime, former NFL general manager of the Arizona Cardinals for 10 years. They made the playoffs three times. Drafted many people you know of. Buda Baker in the second round. Kyler Murray, number one. Tyron Matthew. Patrick Peterson. Calais Campbell, who's now going to be an Atlanta Falcon. Did you view the draft? Was it fun? Was it anxiety uh, driving? Like, how did you view it? <laughs> it was all the above, Colin. It was exciting. Uh, and really where my lifeblood started with, you know, being a scout as a young man and growing through the business. Uh, so you always feel like that uh, the NFL draft is the only way you can have sustainable success at the NFL level. Yet at the same time, nobody wants to feel like they're building through the draft or in a position where they're uh, trying to fix the future. You want to win right now. And that's the only thing you can expect as a fan, as much money as you're paying for tickets and uh, things of that nature. Listen, it is, you know, I, I've said this, Steve, it's a little like international soccer. So 10 years ago in the NFL, maybe 12, 15, that you could have a run game and a defense and win a Super Bowl. It's just not the way it is. Because of safety, the league has pivoted to offense, and quarterback is everything. And our quarterbacks are now paid like Ronaldo and Messi, um, and deservedly so. The downside to that is, is that when you make when you pay somebody that kind of money, it can change people. I think Aaron Rodgers has not been quite as committed. Uh, Kyler Murray, some have had concerns that you know money changes all sorts of people, not just athletes. And so you got into a situation. It, it was a tough situation. That you know, I guess the question for Arizona now is, you're into that contract. He's a very very good player. Um, do you think Arizona? Is Kyler going to come back motivated? Because there are people that I talk to around the league, they, they don't know if they'll ever get the good Kyler back. How do you feel about that today? You know, Colin, I think maybe that I am a, a, a little bit of a hypocrite in terms of uh, feeling strong about what Kyler can do moving forward. And I think in most situations, you would never want your star player to have an injury um, that is of that magnitude. Yet in this situation, uh, I don't think they're – is a real, real uh, huge problem in terms of the guy's going to be in the building every day rehabbing. He's getting to know the people in the building that are working with him in the training room, the coaches. Uh, sometimes that from a trust uh, standpoint can do a lot of the different things. And in this situation, again, I don't think the fact that he's going to have to spend a lot of time in there getting to know the support staff and his teammates even better is a bad thing. Yeah. When you look at this draft, for instance, I don't personally love – the quarterback class, but there is talent. Will Levis has a huge arm. Anthony Richardson's a great athlete. Bryce Young, to me, feels the most refined. Yes. But the size thing. Would, would, would I mean, Carolina gave up a lot. Did they give up too much? The word is they're going to take Bryce. Are you, were you comfortable with how much they gave up to potentially get a non-prototype athlete at number one? Well, again, the eye, the beauty to, uh, in the eye of the beholder, Colin. And the biggest thing about that situation for me is if you feel that strongly about the player, go get him, particularly at a position where supply and demand is such a huge issue. And as I've watched these quarterbacks, uh, to me, this guy's got some special attributes. Again, the size is a concern. But when we did our analytic research in Arizona, there was nothing that could tell you that you could forecast injuries for, from a smaller quarterback to a bigger quarterback. Uh -huh. Because generally, those guys have the ability and the instinct to whether it's slide, to stay out of trouble, or to be able to get out of the pocket and use their legs, where usually the statue tall projectional NFL quarterback is not as mobile, obviously. So, you know, there are a lot of things. And the biggest thing with him that is a little different for me than most of the smaller athletic quarterbacks is his ability to process and th see things. He plays so instinctive, yeah. which again, are things you're hoping most of those athletic quarterbacks grow into. Whereas I think those things are an instinctual thing and he has it. So when the story came out on C.J. Stroud, who scored low on an S2 test, which is sort of a, can you pick up stuff quickly? It's not an IQ. It's not a wonder. Like, it's, are you caught? Can you, and that, by the way, that's a skill for quarterbacks, which I think Mahomes is the best I've ever seen. And Bryce Young, that's the one thing he has in common with Mahomes. He sees it and sees the field brilliantly. Would you have already known it by the time the story came out yesterday? Or is that like groundbreaking? And it, it, are people get when the, the story comes out on him and a lower score? Do you think that's known in the league or has caught everybody off guard? 
No, I think it's known in a league, Kyle, and obviously to some degree as an old school scout, I think that that's private information that the team should know, not necessarily the fans. Uh, I know the more access to the NFL draft, the more popular it is for our leagues, but there are some things, whether it's off field concerns or whether it's some things that uh, a guy can do or can't do in the, in the classroom, doesn't necessarily make him a worse pro- prospect. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, just like my first year in Arizona when we drafted Tyron Matthew, I knew I was going to take a lot of heat for that pick that pick now has come out to look like one of the best picks in my career. So again, the the Fairweather fans and the people who are armchair GMs, you you can't get caught up in that process during the draft. You have to have used tunnel vision and feel strongly about your instincts. Don't get me wrong though. When that information comes out or a team understands that information to be correct uh, at this time of year where we generally overthink things, that is a concern. Um, I think Jalen Carter's the best overall football player. I should say the most dominant I saw in any situation. I think Will Anderson's very good, but I don't think he's a Bosa or maybe a Chase Young, but he's very good. I thought Carter was, I mean, part Fletcher Cox, Aaron Donald, just completely, utterly um, disruptive. But there's the stuff. And there's the, right. there, there's, so how do you weigh that? He's not a quarterback. He's not a face of the franchise, Steve. He is a, a, a bit of a unicorn physically. There's not a lot of Jalen Carters. I mean, there's right. there's seven or eight good edge rushers in this draft. There is one Jalen Carter. How do you weigh that? Do you go to the owner? Do you have to ask? I mean, how do you weigh it? Do you go to the coach and say, we got red flags? How's that decision on a guy like Carter? Well, you obviously have to go through the um, all of that information with the ownership, and they have to be okay with it for the uh, check that they're going to have to write. You have to talk to the head coach about it because he's got to be okay coaching the player and be excited about him. But more than anything, Colin, I think there's two questions as a GM you have to ask yourself, which is, is he a bad kid who just made a mistake, and how much does he love the game? Because loving the game, to me, is a deterrent to not make future mistakes in the NFL. Yeah. Whereas Tyron Matthew was a great kid, got to know him, loved his infectious personality, had a great smile. So he wasn't the kid to me that failed so many drug tests at college. He was a kid that just grew up in a certain culture, and that's the way he saw things. Yeah. That's not the way NFL GMs have to think. You have to think, what is going to keep Tyron Matthew out of trouble? It's because he loved ball. He either loves ball enough, or he's going back to the projects. Yeah, yeah. The um, When you... I want to talk, get off the draft. So the Aaron Rodgers thing with Green Bay and the Jets, listen, Aaron's telling people I'm going to the Jets. It comes down to what we think is the Packers are saying, we'll take a two this year, but we're demanding a one regardless of what Aaron does. And the Jets are saying, if he retires, we're not giving you a two and a one. You're an, let's say you're an agent here. Who's more realistic, the Jets or the, the Packers here? The Packers. In my opinion, uh, if you're the New York Jets, number one, um, you, you don't have the leverage other than the fact that the player wants to play for your organization, which come in, may come into some help, whether it's contractually or just the fact that he's motivated to want to play for you. But the standpoint of the team uh, signed that contract with him, so both sides committed to this relationship. And again, it's the team's rights. And if for, there's anything else, I mean, you're, you're Joe Douglas and you're in New York. Uh, you want to make a splash. It's a point in time to get your team over the hump. And what does that? I don't care if it's for a year or three. To me, it's Aaron Rodgers. What is the easiest position, Steve, to assess that your hit rate was highest on? And what is the position that um, that you would acknowledge that is <laughs> you're sweating, you're crossing fingers before you get to the first camp? Are there or maybe there's not? Are there positions that are easier that you always felt good with? Well, I don't think there's any question that even though I felt like I had a pretty good feel for quarterbacks, that is obviously the most important position to get right. But at the same time, when you look at analytics and you look at past drafts, you can really point to the running back position because of the traits that those guys have to have that are so easy to see. There are some things that you don't see, and there are guys have been some guys that have missed. I would say a lot of those guys probably missed because of uh, injuries. Yes. But at the same time, at the same time, analytics showed us that the best NFL running backs uh, were picked from rounds three to five. Generally guys like Frank Gore down the line, guys like Peace Holmes that were undrafted guys who had tremendous success that you didn't have to pay a high price for. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Okay. So Rob Stone, Jay Glazer, LeVar Arrington, Steve Kime next Thursday, Fox sports radio, first round of the draft eight Eastern, 
Um, I, I got to sit in a draft room once with the Chargers. I, yeah, I thought it was exhilarating. I, it was the most fun I've ever had in sports in my life. Will you, will you miss that? Do you miss that? What, what was draft day like for you? What was it like? The owner's there. You're there. The scouts are there. What was it like? Yeah. When, when the clock's running down and you have to anticipate who's going to be there where you pick, to me there's nothing that you can compare to walking out of a stadium as a player and feeling that energy at the beginning of a game. There's so much excitement and anticipation that it really is your your game for an NFL draft. I also missed you know experiences, Kyle, and I have a funny story for you. When when um, when Cliff Kingsbury and I got together, uh, you know, to go to see players and and have dinners, we went to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And had dinner with Nick Bosa uh, before the prior to the draft. Yeah, and loved him obviously. Our highest graded guy on the board, amazing in every way. The only thing you had to even say was a negative was probably if he got injured in the future, which you couldn't forecast. Yeah. So we were leaving. We were leaving the dinner, and we were walking out of Mastros in Fort Lauderdale. And I'll never forget. He puts his arm around me and Cliff Kingsbury, both of us, in basically a headlock. And he said, "I think you guys are probably going to end up taking that little quarterback. <laughs> and if you do." And if you do, he looked over at me and said, Steve, I will haunt you for the rest of your career. <laughs> <laughs> I love and, that. And, and, and Colin, we got into the SUV, Cliff and I did, to go back to the hotel. And I remember we both looked at each other with wide eyes and said, man, I just said to Cliff, I said, I hope, God hope I, he can't catch him. And he really never did, which was a good thing. <laughs> Steve, good luck to you. Can't wait to listen to you. Fox Sports Radio next Thursday with the guys, Jay Glazer, LeVar Arrington, Rob Stone. Good crew. Good seeing you again. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.